Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for the local organizer. Um, my first time in Lithuania. So I'm glad that Mar Marta talked first because then she introduced the nano onions. So in my six minutes, I'll just tell you a little more about these nanomaterials and what we do. Let's see if this is working. Nope. OK. Oh, yes. First of all, today is the 8th of March. so. Uh, my dear, happy Women's Day to all the women in science we have in the audience. And so in my lab, uh, we synthesize, well, I'm a chemist, and uh, we synthesize building blocks of different molecules, and we learn how to assemble them in order to make new materials. We're interested in applications such as imaging, diagnostic senses, sensing, drug discovery, and environmental application. So today I'll just show you some results on nano onions. So these are multi-layer fullerene, discovered in 1992 by Ugarte. They have, um, there are literature reports on their applications for catalysis, electromagnetic shielding, gas storage, and optical limiting. But I'm interested in using them for biomedical application. And uh, I hope to convince you these carbon, carbon nano onions are quite a nice platform for all a variety of applications such as imaging and uh, targeted delivery. So we synthesize them in the lab, starting from na detonation nanodiamond. And as you can see in the microscope, these are five nanometers carbon nanoparticles. From the IRSTM, we can see the multi-layer uh, multi -layer structures. And uh, we tested them not only in zebrafish, as Marta has presented, but also on freshwater polyp, the hydra, and as well as in mice. We have decorated them with different fluorophores. We started from green fluorophores. These are some results we published recently. And we show very nice cellular uptake of this five nanometers nanoparticle in different cell lines. And we can use the surface also to do non-covalent interaction. So we were able to show that we can use them to bring, in this case, was a um, synthesized body P uh, fluorophore with a pyrin that can pi pi stack on the surface. So we can functionalize them covalently and non-covalently through supramolecular interaction. And so recently we have developed a water-soluble red dye and this is again a, a, a bodipi dye. And here you can see the absorption and emission spectra in water, as well as in DMS. It absorbs and emits in the red um, region of the spectra. And when it's coupled on the onion, again, we can still see the fluorescence. And in cells, we can see very nice red, bright fluorescence. So I think I have a little movie here that shows the nano-onions inside the cells and as well the co-localization in lysosome. Okay. Next, as we all know, there are differences in pH at the cellular level, but also in proximity of cancer cells. So what we wish to do is to design a nano-diagnostic, uh, let's say a nano-vector, um, that can actually use for diagnostic purposes. So we have developed a pH-dependent uh, pH red dye, and we can uh, basically, and we, again, we couple it on the onion, and what we can do, we can see the red fluorescence only at slightly acidic pH. So we can see this is in the cells. There is no fluorescence at neutral pH, pH 7.4, and then you can see the nice red bright fluorescence at pH 4.5. What we are also doing in the lab, we are uh, targeting the nano onions. We started with folic acid, which is overexpressed in many cancer cells. And we proved that we can help, let's say, direct the uptake into cancer cells. And currently, we're looking at using those as drug delivery vehicles. So I'd like to thank my group um, in Italy and, uh, of course, the Coast Action, all of you. And just uh, I look forward to tomorrow's meeting. And uh, I coordinate with Gina Manda, the work package free. So I look forward to that as well. And uh, thank you for your time and attention.